today. All right, well, we're just out here dry fitting the lid on the battery and quite a bit of progress that has been happening here. We've got our terminals in and I'm going to show you guys a closer look at these terminals and the circuit breakers and the opening and I'm currently dry fitting this piece of plexiglass over the face and I'm going to glue that in there. So that's what we're working on today. <laughs> Uh, why this one is off like it is and why I had to put a wood spacer behind here. If we go inside, see it looks really tight and it is. It's close to that BMS. But as you can see there is plenty of space. It's not going to short out on anything. But I needed this half inch piece of plywood as my spacer. Otherwise it was hitting that BMS on there. So, a few things that I had to modify, but not a problem. We're almost done with this battery and I am so excited. Uh, right here on this plywood chunk, I have caulked around the perimeter and we're going to paint this. I got some red paint and I have some black paint. We're going to paint these pieces of plywood. These are going to be the main negative and main positive posts for the battery. We still have our circuit breakers over here. This chunk that is missing, that's where the plug used to go, that would plug it into the car. I just put a piece of plexiglass over that so you can kind of see in there. Now something I'm excited to try is uh, can, uh, can the Bluetooth uh, for the, the phone and these BMSs go through the steel case? Now there's three BMSs on this side and since there's going to be some plexiglass, we might have good luck with them on this side. On the other side, there's no plexiglass, no windows, so I might not be able to get out, but I need to test them with the phone. If the signal can get out, no problem. If it can't, I'll have to drill a hole where those BMSs are uh, to allow for the Bluetooth signal. But we're going to find out together, but right now I'm going to get a coat of paint on both of these, and then we'll test the, uh, the Bluetooth, and then take the cover off. If, uh, if we need to make some adjustments uh, and we'll still have to make our cables that are going to connect up to these posts. You'll see a bump right here and then going down another bump and there's actually three bumps so one, two, and three. Now they correlate with where the uh, post was on the battery inside because that post was sticking up a little bit higher and there's a ridge right here, kind of a rib in the metal and that was touching the post. Now it was insulated with uh, electrical tape but I just wanted to make sure there's plenty of clearance so I pounded that out from the inside. Would you guys please tell me if the fan noise from the inverter is too much? I hope it's not overpowering in the video. We have been off-grid most of the summer and I'm just going to use some of this plastic dip because I have it and it's going to go bad soon. Now I originally was not going to have any plywood on these terminals. I was actually excited about these terminals because they have their own nylon bushings and uh, just put them directly into the shell but the problem is, and I tried that, the trouble was that it wound up being too deep. The, in the back side they wound up hitting the BMS's so I had to create the spacer and then I had to create the spacer and block the original hole <laughs> and so I wound up using the plywood. Now we get to try the BMS's inside. Looks like all the BMS's are actually showing up. So let's go ahead and start with number one and what I did was I wrote down here battery one through six. The last two uh, letters or numbers those are actually the last two of the serial number and that's how they show up on the phone. So let's start with number one which is E5. And E5 is on the back side of the battery bank. And it looks like it's showing up. Okay, Let's try number five, one E. Oh, it looks like one E is not showing up. Number five should be right here. 
now it showed up and it's still very weak. So it looks like it's a bit directional. I have to be uh, on this side. It didn't work when I was up on top. I have to take the cover off anyways to make these connections to these posts. So I might as well uh, drill and do something in the back there. Let's try number six, which is right behind here. And that's going to be F5. Should be pretty good. Yeah, so it has a middle signal strength. And can you see the blue light? That one turning on. So that's pretty cool. We've been off grid most of the summer running on this inverter. The whole house, including electric oven and electric stovetop. Uh, I'm, I'm really, really happy that I've been able to get away with it. But this has popped a couple of times uh, from overloading. Uh, typically when the water heater would kick on at the same time that we're doing something like a microwave or a stove. So I do wish that I had a slightly larger unit than the 6,000 uh, watt. All right, the glue is drying on these plexiglass windows, along with that one there. And while they're drying, let's take a look over here. They're gonna line up. Now I glued the Bluetooth dongles in place, and I taped the wires so they shouldn't get in the way. I taped down all the wires on top so they won't like pop up and get pinched when I put the lid on. And now I can go ahead and work on making up some wires to go off these two terminals to the main positive. Well, they've had enough time to dry, so let's go ahead and get the plastic off this. Good, nice little window. Okay. I set up a couple of wood slats in the pallets just to support this lid and get it close. Now I can take these wires and they're gonna have to go to the inside. So I'm taking one of the cables and it, I'm fishing it up underneath going right there to that terminal and it, then it has to go up and over the case you know somewhere around right there so I'm gonna cut this I'll get two lengths out of it I'm starting out with two equal length wires for the positive side now let's see that's four up that's not gonna fit it's gonna be too big this is one up this might fit yeah so that one up fits pretty well that might be the answer Yep, good, so that held well. I can just do the other one, same way. So it has an adhesive on the inside. Both of them have heat shrink tubing on them now. For the other end of these cables, I'm going to be using these uh, ferrules. So these ferrules say on the package 35 millimeter square. So here's the set of 35, and you can see it just falls right out. It won't crimp it. And yet, this uh, 25 uh, die is what I'm gonna use, you know, to squeeze that down. All right, we got both ends with ferrules on them. All right, got the wires in there. Now I can put these studs in place. Up in here. Do something like that. 
here's all the negatives. There's six wires. They're all eight gauge. I think I'll put them all into one ring terminal. Okay, so if we can manage this <laughs> successfully, get them all into one. Here's, here's the one-aught lug. And it looks like it's going to fit well on these six wires, and these are six eight gauge wires with very fine strands. have to stay in there. So trying to fit this on, these red ones here, they're tough to maneuver and I'm not getting enough movement in them to be able to get this down the rest of the way. So I'm going to have to cut these shorter Oh no! My little windows, all of them, um, it looks like the, the clearance must have been just a little bit too tight and they're not going to work like that. I'm going to have to put these pieces of plexiglass on the outside I guess. Darn! Darn it would have looked so good! <laughs> Okay, just got the lid on a second time. I rearranged how these fat wires run. So this one here runs down, up, <laughs> and over. Uh, this side just goes up to it. <laughs> and let's stick the phone in here and see if we can, how it looks. Good, so nothing's rubbing now. Right now I'm getting this original bar back on and I had pried it up, but I did get one nut on so far, right there. And now I switched to the opposite corner and I'm working on this bar which goes around where there used to be rivets along here. And now I'm going to work on getting some nuts on those studs. Well the battery is all put together. I've got all those nuts on the bottom, you can see them going down. I have uh, re-glued those little plexiglass windows and clamped them on so you can see the glue and plexiglass. I'm going around up front here, you can see our wires in there, our negative post, another little window there, and then over on this side we have our positive post and I glued on that piece of plexiglass on the front and we have all of our circuit breakers. Well, the windows look really terrible compared to what I wanted. You know, so we could see those fun LEDs if they're balancing. If I had put it on the inside, I wouldn't have been able to get it on over the uh, circuit breakers. The battery is finally done. So let's go through our checks. Right now I have logged into battery number four and you can see the little Bluetooth uh, light is on and that's working. Try this guy here. Uh, that's going to be um, battery number three. So battery number three, I put a little, is EA. 
So we'll just find EA, there it is. And you can see the light just lit on. And now let's even uh, see if we can cause it to make these lights go by turning to parameter settings. And right now it's going to be only balancing when it's charging. See it says charge balance. So we'll change that to static. Submit. And it'll probably do something. There. So now it's looking. It's checking the cells. We can actually go see what it's thinking. So see we have number one cell up there is 4.047 and then we have 4.051 down here so it's looking around and this will settle back down because I think I only have it on a 5 millivolt difference so it's just checking them quick it shouldn't take long yeah see it's on a 5 millivolt difference so now you can see the blue lights coming through when it's charging and we're getting a good signal with the Bluetooth and that's what we wanted we'll change this back to charge balance only submit and it turns off so we're going to check for any voltage to the shell or any continuity to the shell uh, so the negative post is uh, connected to the batteries and we'll check here All right, so we're not getting anything, so we're good. Awesome. We have 56.7 volts. The pack is finally done. <laughs> I mean, this thing has been such a long, drawn-out battle. When I first opened it up, some of the cells were dead. Some of them just had 0.1 volts or 0.2 volts. I mean, this pack was, you know, a lot of people said, just throw it out. Uh, and... Maybe I should have to kept my, keep my sanity, but, uh, you know, I decided to try to recover the cells and it took months, months to recover these cells. I was charging them at 0.1 amps, uh, but eventually we recovered the cells. We got them good. I tested every single cell. I removed any bad cells. If I keep the pack to only an 11 kilowatt hour capacity, then those cells, even the weakest ones, don't go below 3.5 volts. And that's what I want. So I'm going to call this an 11 kilowatt hour usable pack. It's probably 15, maybe a little bit more kilowatt hours uh, total because I'm only charging it to 4.05 volts per cell and draining it to 3.5. 3.5 is what I want uh, to cut off personally, but the BMSs are programmed to cut off at 3 volts. Now those BMSs have turned out to be really nice. I like them. Uh, they, they have a lot more parameters. Just the other day I was hitting some buttons on the BMS uh, on the phone and it showed me a graph of the uh, current going through the cells and the voltage of the cells over time. I didn't know it even had that ability. <laughs> but this has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it. I hope you have as well. If you have, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out the links in the description below. They really do help out. Thank you very much for watching.